There are four different categories of game. There is social circle, cold approach pickup. There is lifestyle and looks maxing. And then there's dating apps. All four of these categories you can crush with women in. It's even better though when you mix and match them, when you put them all together and you work on all four at the same time. Each of the four categories feeds into the other ones. If you work on your social circle, it improves your cold approach pickup, your charisma. If you work on your cold approach pickup, it improves your dating apps. If you work on your dating apps, it fixes and even props up your lifestyle slash looks maxing. They all feed into each other. So when trying to improve the women, you wanna work on all four of the categories. Now, in my personal opinion, who is the best coach in each category? With that being said, let's get into the video. Yo, bitch, I got some buzzes crawling on my fucking stomach. Spring is finally coming around the corner. What does that mean? That means it's time to get out there and start talking to women. And what better way to start it off than starting off with a boot camp? Coming up during spring break, I'll be throwing a group boot camp in Las Vegas, Nevada. Women will be running the streets in bikini tops looking to find a guy to go home with. Text me spring break to 702-841-9909 if you are interested in jumping on. Now let's get back into the video. Style number one, cold approach pickup. Cold approach pickup over the past decade has had a lot of people attacking it, but I'll say this in 2023, the fact that no other guy is doing this will instantaneously set you apart from the competition. Being able to speak, being able to d command yourself having charisma, having the ability to stand up for yourself, to be masculine, to speak with power. These things will make you sexy as fuck. The ability to just handle yourself in situations. And this will also feed into the other three styles of game. Which coach did I choose? If you guys saw the thumbnail, it's Todd Valentine. You guys already know this. I love Todd Valentine. I used to work with him at some point. He's a great coach. So let's break down one of his videos. The sort of playfulness and creativity of your opens though. Right, the whole like, oh, we can't have, we can't have you being this, this down in the mall, or we can't have this, you know, that kind of stuff. Give them a, hard, a bit of a hard time, a little bit of a tease and banter. It's good to initiate that as soon as possible, right? Um, that said, even when your opener is good, same thing I told him, you do have to keep talking past it, right? Even if you have a really clever opener and she giggles, you can't just be like, okay, there's my clever opener, you giggled, now the sex happens it's now, right? Premise. It's just important that you, you just decide to converse. Like, just rambling is also okay. Think of the conversation almost like a living thing, right? You have to feed it. And as you feed it, it grows. And then at a certain point, it becomes self-sufficient. Right? So the conversation is like this little baby. You have to feed it, nurture it, take care of it, put everything into it. And then at a certain time, it's its own living being. And then you can sit back and let it like do its thing. Right, right, yeah. Right? Okay. But at the start, you have to feed it. Absolutely. Right? You can't just be like, oh, there's, you know, I threw out, I threw out a line. Conversation, start yourself. Yeah. Right? You have to do the effort. Because the girl didn't approach you. Um, and so she may not be ready for the approach. She may not know right. what the approach is. She may feel- Women don't have to invest early on in the relationship. It's just not their job. They're, they have all the power in the upfront, whereas men are chasing them. And then men, as the girl starts to be won over, starts gaining all the power. So early on, especially even a conversation with a girl, you have to invest first and you have to get the conversation started. It's not the girl's job to keep the conversation going, keep the conversation rolling. Another reason why cold approach pickup is great for you to learn, because if you learn how to use this, there's never gonna be a moment where you're awkward or you don't know what to do. The upfront is the hardest thing for any man. If you figure out the upfront, the back end of the relationship of the dating scene is really fucking easy. She may feel weird or awkward in that moment, not because she doesn't like you, just because she's nervous. She may feel like if she makes a move on a guy or does anything to make it go towards sex, it's slutty. There's all kinds of reasons why she won't take the initiative. Yeah. But if you do take the initiative a little bit, at some point she will. Yeah. And once she does, then you can sit back and relax. Right? But yeah, you really guys need to assume the burden after the open. Just throwing out an opener is not opening. My definition of beginner, intermediate, advanced in game. My definition of beginner in game is someone who they could do <clears throat> an infinite number of sets and not get a result, in theory. Because there's some fundamental fatal flaw in their game keeping them from it. And one, one of the most common beginner fatal flaws is not closing. If you never close, you could have amazing game and theoretically just never, ever, ever, ever get a result. Right? So unless you have at least some semblance of each of the steps in game and, and especially that closing step, you are essentially a beginner. So if you don't make it man to woman, no matter how charismatic you are, no matter how cool you are, you're a beginner. Right? You're maybe a very socially adept beginner, very charismatic beginner, but you're a beginner. Intermediate is when um, you can get results with girls, but it's a numbers game and usually a relatively large-ish numbers game. Right? So if you approach enough girls, like I would say with confidence, each and every one of you, if you approach enough girls and you make it a point to make it man to woman like you do in your good sets and you make it a point to say, um, what's your number or let's go on a date or something like that at the end of it, each and every one of you is good enough that you could have not only a sex life but a very good sex life. By doing that, you would just have to do potentially a lot of approaches to get there. Right? So you are at the point where beginners don't even have a numbers game, intermediates have a numbers game. 
And the, the big thing with intermediates in terms of game style is that you're, and in the case of you guys at least, you're charming, you're high value, you're cool guys. And that's why girls like you, is for all those reasons. However, there's not a lot of tension in the girl's mind over whether they can have you, right? And so you're getting the boyfriend objection because the girl knows she can have you and knows what it's about and is just kind of saving you time and saving herself time and whatever, right? Over the next few weeks, I want you to actually get the boyfriend objection maybe more even than you are, okay, at first. I love his advice. To be fair, it's a lot of the stuff that I find myself parroting without even ever watching this video. It's the same exact thing that I tell my clients. Todd is on point with all of his advice when it comes to cold approach pickup. He knows what he's talking about. And to be fair, he also does teach dating apps, which I do too. I, I work on all these different forms of game and styles. Uh, a lot of cold approach dating coaches do nowadays teach dating apps because it just makes sense. It's an easy layover. Like if you're gonna be teaching cold approach pickup, you're gonna also be teaching dating apps. The next coach I'll be breaking down for you guys is a lifestyle coach. His name is Alpha M and he's a guy that I've been watching for a very long time. I love his stuff. Lifestyle, for those of you who don't know, is anything society says that will make you better with the opposite sex, mainstream society. Gym, fashion, uh, working on your business, your job, your purpose. These things will give you a grounding, something to base your confidence upon. I, I know a lot of guys who have gone out and just gotten really good at cold approach and developed this obscene confidence with nothing to base it on. Uh, but it's a lot easier to have confidence when you have something to back it up. Gentlemen, one of the problems that comes along with being a stylish dude is deciding what to wear to a specific event. Outfit selection is much easier for unstylish men. They just don't care. But we want to look super fresh and dynamite without looking like we're trying too hard. This is an issue that I face that I'm sure you face as well. Until now, because today I'm going over my top five go-to looks that always make me the best dressed guy in the room. I know that if I've got somewhere to go, one of these five looks will actually work and I will ultimately look amazing. I'm gonna start super dressy and work my way backwards to casual cool. Now for this video, I have teamed up with one of my favorite affordably awesome watch brands, if fitting a girl's archetype, look at giving a certain look or having a certain feel to you, working on your lifestyle, your business, your purpose, these things will make you feel more confident. It gives you again something to base, you know, this this charisma upon. It's hard to act like the guy when you're not the guy. The more that you become him, the easier it is for your game to fucking flow. And again, the better your charisma is, the easier it is for you to work on your lifestyle. Now you can become the top one percent in any of these fields and women will love you. You can be a top one percent of game which to be fair is not too much competition in the game, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, you would be in the top 1% of lifestyle, which is very, very competitive, but if you do it very intelligently, you can become the top 1% of that. You can become the top 1% of all these things, or you can mix and match them, become the top 1% by just becoming like the top 20% each. How many guys are the top 20% of all four of these different categories? Not very many guys. And if you could do that, you'll instantaneously become top 1% for way less effort than you would take to get to the top 1% of any of these fields, which is why I'm teaching you guys the four pillars of game. You guys want to do all four, because if you do all four, it's a lot less effort than learning to be the top 1% of a singular one. Okay, now we're going to get into social circle. Now, if you are surrounded by hot girls, if you're surrounded by cool ass guys, it's a lot easier to get women. Women want guys that are pre-selected and that have cool guys around them. If you were the popular kid, the women will chase you. If you go to a club, you have all these girls around you, you have a table. I don't know if you guys have ever had this where girls start fighting for you, it becomes a feeding frenzy. It's called pre-selection. Girls want a guy that's liked by other women. They also want the cool guy. No girl wants a lone wolf. So I'm gonna introduce you guys to Michael Sartain. He was a coach inside my industry. He also lives in Vegas as well. I've heard a lot about this guy. Um, so we're gonna listen to one of his videos really fast and we're gonna break it down. And what, what I've said before, this is also very confusing to a lot of pickup or red pill guys, is 85% of the women I date are, are girls that I'm friends with. And they, they're like, oh no, but they're, no, they are the same, there was a song, can we fucking still be friends? Yes, the answer is yes. There's really no uh, difference. There's another thing that I think a lot of people are confused by, and this is this idea. Women often don't like someone and sleep with them. Whether or not she likes you and whether or not she sleeps with you have nothing to do with each other. Women often very much adore a man that she will not sleep with. Women very often do not like a guy that she does sleep with. Those things have nothing to do with each other. So what we've gotten is, is this point where if we're friends, then we're, we're not sleeping together. And that often that isn't the case. So that's the part that's kind of confusing. For most men, what happens though, if any one of these ladies, if they tried to be friends with them, all of a sudden they'd start catching feelings. The guys would because they have scarcity in their life. Most men have scarcity. As mm, I, you know, I said you those- scarcity 
your mind. I sent yes. you those clips before. 33% of men between the ages of 18 and 30 have zero sexual partners, and women find 80% of men on on uh, dating apps to be unattractive. Mm -hmm. So me most men have no uh, abundance. With no abundance, if you try to be friends with these ladies, you would become like, oh, you'd start having feelings. And then what would happen is you're starting to use your friendship to sort of manipulate your way into being like the backup guy that maybe she has sex with after. When I was younger, I totally have felt this in the past. I, <laughs> I moved to a place now to where it's not such a big deal, but most of you guys are incapable of being friends with women. And that's very tough. Um, if you're in that place right now, honestly, cold approach is going to help you out because you need to start getting around a lot more women. Uh, or creating even situations where the women are around. So I'll tell you this, I don't know if Michael Sertain ever mentioned this in his videos. Um, he created an entire business around being around models and doing modeling competitions. Now the reason for him doing this is not for the money. He doesn't do it for the money. He did it so he could get around attractive girls. And then once he got around the attractive girls, he got comfortably around them because he's constantly around them. And then that's how he started getting his abundance. Uh, cold Approach Pickup is an easy way to start creating more of a... <laughs> Uh, so circle with a bunch of attractive women because if you can't be real friends with these girls It's gonna be tough for you You have to give some kind of other monetary value until you can become legitimate friends with them She breaks up with someone oh. the girl that I'm seeing now when she started seeing me And she started telling her her guy friends that she was seeing me that they all of a sudden started giving her Proclamations of love and started saying why how angry they were because they were waiting for their turn They were mm. not genuinely friends with her right she didn't she's very young She did not understand that and so that's the that's the issue that happens. Correct. Rolo and I agree. Most men cannot do what I do where I go to the Playboy Mansion. I know 100 girls and I might have dated eight of them. Right. But that's the thing. When we like when Fosh and I were in Jamaica, there were 150 girls there. The likelihood of me like trying to hook up with all those girls. It's, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. Of course not. But I can be attracted to them. And then here's the other the other part where a lot of guys get lost. So for instance, because I used to manage a strip club and because now I host the two biggest bikini competitions in the world, and because I also host uh, the Babes in Toyland charity, which I was, I was the biggest influencer charity in Los Angeles, because of that, there's no possible way for me to get 150 girls to come to the Maxim party or Dan Bilzerian's party or something like that without having female friends. It's just not possible. And then the last thing I want to say is, fellas, if you're out there and you disagree with me, do this for a second. Find really attractive women that you know, friends with or not friends with or, or, or whatever. Ask them how they met the last five guys that they went out with. And the answer is always going to be, it's going to go like this. A girl introduced me, a girl introduced me, a girl introduced me, a girl introduced mm -hmm. me, a guy introduced me. Those will be the five answers. It's never going to be daytime, day game, cold approach at the fucking mall. <laughs> you will never hear that. From the most attractive women, you will never fucking hear that answer. Right? It might be slide to the DMs or whatever. So, I don't know if I'm going to put this in the video itself because I do really respect Michael Sartain. But um, he is very against cold approach, and I have a lot of friends that actually know him, a lot of female friends that know him, and they say that he's very awkward. And if he was to actually invest a little bit in cold approach, I'm not saying cold approach by itself, but if he was to invest a little bit in cold approach, um, I bet you he would get even better results. It would probably electrify his results if he could just build up his charisma even more. Um, I think he has an incredible camera presence. I think he's doing great at that, but... Sometimes around hot girls, he can be a little bit awkward from what I understand. Now, the last guy is a seeming underdog. He's actually just a little bit bigger than me, I believe. Uh, and he is completely around online dating. Now, if you have online dating in the bag, which I've been working on for a very long time, I got very good at it myself. And I've helped a lot of clients out with it as well. If you guys are interested in knowing more about that, let me know at 702-841-9909. I can coach you up and teach you how to do this. Um, but it's such a passive stream of income. It's like once you get it set up, it's like the abundance is just there and the confidence comes. It's so much easier. So what I do like about this guy is that he came to a lot of the same conclusions about online dating that I did. His name is Text God. Let's get into it. Tip number one, your first photo is your flagship. Uh -huh. It's the first photo she sees, so it mainly needs to do one of two things. Instantly swipe your right or make her stop swiping and check the rest of your profile. Most women don't instantly swipe guys though. If they like the first photo, they'll check out the rest. So the amount of photos and what exactly you show in those is important. But more on that. I, I actually term this banner blindness. There's a marketing term behind this. So I try to make the very first photo do anything I can to break out her band of blindness. I either make it very colorful, black and white, and I usually want it to be one of my best looking photos. Something's gonna make her stop and hesitate. This, this is very big in terms of online dating because it's, it's banner blindness, boom, boom, boom. 
And then she's going to take a moment. She's going to look through your profile and see if she likes you. That's where you fucking hook her in. Banner blindness, break her out of it. Later in the video. For example, here's a photo I've used for a couple years. And here's why it's good. I look good in it and I smile and look approachable. Could the smile be better? Yes. Unfortunately, I look like this when I try to do a big smile in a photo. This frontal upper third smile photo is an ideal format for your flagship photo. By the way, want an easy trick to stand out from the competition? Tip number two. Use a pattern interrupt. A pattern interrupt is a darn effective sales technique, but it's also used in many other professions. Content creators, for example, will use a video pattern interrupt to spark and refocus your attention. Aha! I'm doing it right now. Anyway, what does this mean for you and your dating app? That most profiles and their first photos or their flagship photos have a very similar look. Let's open Tinder together, do a few swipes and see. Does anyone stand out? They're all pretty similar, aren't they? Now imagine you suddenly see this. Boom! Pattern interrupted. Yeah. Suddenly she's refocused, all eyes on you because she suddenly sees this photo that looks different from all others. You stood out. All you have to do is find any wall with any bright color. Or you could wear the color yourself, but then you're at risk of being arrested by the fashion police. <laughs> Here's some photos I snapped during one walk in Lisbon. Now I'm not saying these photos are perfect. Let's agree that the posing is mediocre at best, but... Okay, so because I've been also doing this for a while too, um, this is a really easy trick. The photos don't look good and it's the body language. Cut it, start trying to cut the photo up. So cut out to the upper torso, cut out the rest. I've done this a lot and this will actually increase a photo's value by like one or two points out of 10 um, if the photo, the body language just isn't right. Just simply cut out the parts that make the body language look bad. Sometimes it's the hands, sometimes it's the lower body. Sometimes I've had clients who are crossing their legs in an awkward way or where it just makes their legs look fat or their hands are just, they don't know what to do with their fucking hands. Um, if that's the case, just cut it up from the torso up. And then it gets rid of the awkward body language because girls care a lot about your personality in a photo. Way more so than a guy. If they look at your photo and think you're going to be fucking weird, they're going to swipe left on you no matter how attractive you are. Tip number three. How many photos? Let's cut the part where I quote studies and stuff and get... I'm actually really curious to see what he says. My thing is I only do three or four photos because here's the thinking behind this. The more photos that you have up is more of a chance for the girl to swipe left on you. I don't know what his answer is, so let's see what he says. Straight to the point. Depending on the app, you'll need a different amount of photos. And here's how many- Hinge, you need six. The rest shouldn't be, should only be three or four. Anything less than three, the girl's gonna be like, I don't know what the fuck he looks like. Anything more than four, and you're risking a girl saying no to you. Any photos you should use for some of my favorite apps. Tinder, five or six. Ooh. Bumble, five. Hinge, six. The app forces you to use six. Huh. Extra rules though. One, if you're still in the process of getting more good photos, then less is more. Remember, your profile is only as attractive as your least. See, I'm not one of those coaches that gets obsessed with his, with his method. I'm gonna try this out first before I say anything about this. Um, I wanna experiment a little bit more with this and see what it, it, how it works. I might even split test this and see if I like his strategy. Photo two. Never do less than three photos. You will look about as trustworthy as one of those emails that says that your great, 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 great grandfather died in some faraway country and you now suddenly inherited $69 billion. Extra rule number three, never ever fill all picture slots. You're neither a tryhard nor a show off. Okay, yeah, so I just love this guy's advice. It's just very hard hitting. It's so far, thus far, it's the best I've ever seen. It's the most unique because most pickup guys kind of piggyback off each other. Um, a lot of my strategies have been, I, I've listened to a lot of other dating coaches and I study them, but I find that a lot of dating coaches don't understand the basics or the fundamentals of game or attraction. And they kind of just piggyback right off of everybody else. Um, this guy comes up with very unique strategies and he's really thought this through and I've never heard his advice like this before. And I, to be fair, I, before researching for this video, I never would have thought that like, you know. There's going to be some kind of outlier guy that was going to find that was going to like the most out of everybody. So text God, fuck yeah, kicked ass, man. Love it. All right, guys, to end this up, women are not attracted the same way as men are. Women love high status, high value men. Anything you can do to recreate that, all four of these categories will give you that high status feel. If you're charismatic and you're a good speaker, you'll get hot girls. If you're 
this guy who has all these hot girls around him, you'll get girls. If you have an amazing lifestyle, you get girls. If you have an amazing, crazy, high, beautiful fucking dating app, you're going to get girls. But the best strategy out of all four of those is to combine all four. If you combine all four, you're going to be the baddest mother on planet fucking earth. There's not going to be a guy that can compete with you. When you have the dating apps, the lifestyle, when you have incredible fucking game, when you have all these girls and cool guys around you, who the fuck can compete? And that was the point of this video. A lot of dating coaches, almost every dating coach gets an ego. Like Michael Zertain is like cold approach. A lot of dating app guys don't believe in, in a uh, social circle or cold approach. They don't believe in lifestyle. They don't think that you can actually improve on looks. A lot of looks maxing guys don't believe in anything other than looks maxing. Everybody's just creating an ego because I was at one point into one style or another and it just doesn't fucking make any sense. It's just so dumb to do. You want to work on everything in your fucking power. Like why would you turn a blind eye without even fucking trying it? All four of these work. All four of these can work to drawing in a very valuable, high quality girl. But the best strategy is doing all four. If you work on all four, you'll get a lot better at this a lot faster. Your cold approach will get better. Your dating apps will get better. Your lifestyle will get better. Your social circle will improve massively if you're just a charismatic, cool, fun guy. All right, guys, and that being said, yeah, peace. Bitch, I got some